I, I love my committee. We have a quorum already. Uh, Madam Secretary, would you call the roll? Quirk. Here. Quirk. Melendez. Here. Gonzalez. Here. Joan Sawyer. Present. Lackey. Lowe. Santiago. Yes, thank you very much. This makes our business much easier. I really appreciate your help. Um, so we have uh, some announcements. We have three bills that were pulled by their authors, uh, AB 84 Gatto, uh, AB 526, that's item two, AB 84 Gatto, item nine, AB 526 Holden, and item 23, AB 1001 Manshine. So if you're here for any of those bills, uh, we won't be hearing them today. Uh, then we have a list of proposed uh, consent calendar items, which we'll try to dispose of right now so the authors and those in attendance don't have to worry about them. Second. All right, and those items are item 11, AB 546 Gonzalez. Item 12, AB 602 Gallagher. Item 15, AB 673 Santiago. Item 20, AB 892 Occasion. And item 22, uh, AB 929 Chow. Um, what is the official motion? Uh, and who was the second? Uh, all right, thank you, Mr. Lackey. All right, uh, Madam, you may call the roll. Quirk. Um, I. Quirk, I. Melendez. Aye. Melendez, I. Gonzalez. Aye. Gonzalez, I. Joan Sawyer. Aye. Joan Sawyer, I. Lackey. Aye. Lackey, I. Lowe. Santiago. So the consent calendar has been adopted. Um, and thank you all for being here and working on this important <laughs> issue. Um, we are going to now call by sign in order. Uh, there will be a, an interruption at some point when Assemblymember Gonzalez's uh, witnesses are here. They're already here? Oh, okay. Well, when, when there's a concern, give me the high sign. All right, thank you very much. Um, so the first person we're going to hear is from Assemblymember Stone, if he's here. Oh, he's chairing judicial, so we'll see him when he, uh, when he arrives. Um, then we have Assemblymember Rodriguez, AB 69, item number one. Uh, please uh, go ahead and open and let us hear from your witnesses. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members. AB 69 seeks to provide guidelines for developing and implementing policies and procedures for downloading and storing data from body-worn cameras. Body-worn cameras are the newest law enforcement tool being implemented by several police departments statewide to capture law enforcement officers' interactions with the public. In recent years, several studies have been done on the use of these cameras. One of these studies is the evaluation of the use of cameras by the Rialto Police Department in 2012. Researchers found that officers who wore cameras compared to those who did not use force lefts often. Many law enforcement departments currently using body-worn cameras have formal policies covering some of the key issues such as when to record, how long, and to retain recordings. However, these policies will likely need to evolve as departments develop better understandings of how body-worn cameras affect policing practices on the ground. AB 69 focuses on providing guidelines for downloading and storing body-worn camera data for those law enforcement agencies that choose to implement a body-worn camera program. AB 69 includes recommendations to ensure the security, integrity, and reliability of the data downloaded and stored. I respectfully ask for an item. And then uh, two witnesses, two minutes each. Uh, who is your witness? I don't think they've come in yet. Uh, um, well, I'm going to recommend, well, if there are no witnesses in support, are there, can we have anyone in the audience who uh, wishes to uh, testimony, testify in support. Do we have any witnesses in opposition? Um, and any questions from the members? Sure. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so just to clarify, this does not, um, this is for the departments who are using body-worn cameras. You're not dictating necessarily how they formulate their policy, but rather that they have one, right? Correct. Just the ones that would like to use the cameras, and really this specifically on the downloading and storage of the data right. for those departments that choose to use them. Okay, so just some yeah. specifics in that area. I just want to clarify. Correct. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Second. You may close, and you didn't really need any witnesses, so go ahead. <laughs> Thank you very much, and I respectfully ask for your eye vote. All right. Uh, this is an excellent bill, as the vice chair pointed out. It's simply asking the uh, local agency to come up with what they think are the best policies. It's an excellent bill. It is not overreach. I recommend an aye and hope that it passes out of here unanimously. All right, Madam, what is the, uh, is it uh, two appropriations? Uh, the motion is due pass to Privacy Committee. Due pass to? Privacy Committee. Oh, due pass to the Privacy Committee is the motion. Uh, Madam Secretary, you may call the roll. Quirk? Aye. Quirk, aye. Melendez? Aye. Melendez, aye. Gonzalez? Gonzalez, aye. Joan Sawyer? Lackey? Aye. Lackey, aye. Low? Aye. Low, aye. Santiago? Uh, Bill is out. Congratulations and well done. Thank you. All right. Uh, next we have uh, Mr. Dababne, uh, Mr. Levine. Mr. Daly, Mantrine, uh, Wolk I saw outside. All right, and uh, Mr. Garcia. I think, uh, uh, oh, here we go. Ed, here we have Assembly Member Eduardo Garcia uh, on item number 18, AB 832. Are you ready? I am ready. I'm just not used to sitting down. I, we got told to stand up the other day. I'm sorry. Eight, it's item 24. AB 1019. AB 1019. Somehow, oh, my list was just not correct. Well, so good morning, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the great. committee. I bring AB 1019 forward. It is a metal theft task force bill that would create a task force under the Department of Justice in order to enforce the uh, escalating problems that we see uh, not only in California, but uh, particularly in the 56th district as it relates to metal theft. Uh, the bill takes an approach where we will collect licensing fees to develop a grant program under the Department of Justice for our local uh, law enforcement agencies to have the necessary resources to enforce uh, the uh, laws that are already um, on the books uh, uh, to address this uh, escalating problem. As you know, uh, the metal theft problems have impacted not only public agencies, but also uh, private entities, builders, uh, the farm community, and uh, many state uh, agencies as well uh, that have been impacted by the uh, vandalism and the theft of uh, metal. So uh, I ask for your support on this bill. All right, very good. Do you have any witnesses? So we got uh, the Farm Bureau who just uh, sent us a message. They're stuck in traffic in the rain. Uh, mm -hmm. They are the supporters. They are not here at this time. Yeah, I, again, there's a positive recommend, recommendation on this. Uh, is there anyone else who wishes to speak in support? Uh, anyone in opposition? Um, having given the uh, opportunity for people to speak, uh, committee members, do you have questions or comments? I just have a quick comment that uh, I'll be voting no today, but willing to support it if industry opposition is worked out. Thank you. Very good. Um, anyone else? All right, you may close. Well, uh, just in closing, this is an escalating problem that is estimated to be cost almost a billion dollars of impact to this country. Um, we are hoping to give the local law enforcement agencies the resources to be able to uh, enforce the uh, problems occurring here in California. I ask for Very your eyeball. Good. Um, so the recommendation is I. Um, I personally have seen uh, tens of thousands of dollars damage uh, in damage done for people who are getting tens of dollars for copper piping. When they, when they uh, tear out uh, the piping in a, in a house 
or in a, uh, in recently in our area in a church. So I'm very much in favor of this going forward. I think Mr. Lackey's concern uh, dealing with the industry, uh, you're going to pledge to work with them going forward. Uh, so I enthusiastically uh, recommend and I vote. Oh, late opposition, I'm glad to hear from you. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Sorry for being late. Uh, Catherine Brandenburg with the Institute of Scrap Recycling Industries. Um, as the member has stated, we are working with him. Uh, this is a bill that has come before the committee a number of times, and um, it's not there yet. We have a lot of concerns with the way it's drafted, but we are working with the member. We believe that there are other avenues we can take. As you know, ISRI has always supported uh, something that works, that's realistic, to stop metal theft. We've supported bills, sponsored bills, and this is one we hope we will be able to support as we work through the process. So at this time, we do oppose unless amended and uh, look forward to working with the member and the committee on this bill. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your constructive comments. Um, Madam Secretary, what is the motion? Do pass to appropriations. Do pass to appropriations. Um, you may call the roll. Quirk? Aye. Quirk, aye. Melendez? Melendez, no. Gonzalez? Aye. Gonzalez, aye. Joan Sawyer? Lackey? No. Lackey, no. Low? Aye. Low, aye. Santiago? Aye. Santiago, aye. So the bill is out for two. Congratulations, and I know you'll be working closely with uh, Catherine Brand Brandenburg will. and the other representatives of the industry. Thank you. Oh, let me, I, my microphone wasn't on. Mr. Dubovny, AB160, item number three. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. AB160 will stop counterfeiters from profiting from their crimes. As a direct result of their criminal activity, the financial liability and capture tax revenue for the state, California is home to many key industries, which are prime targets for organized counterfeiting and piracy. For example, the film and television industry, which provides over 190,000 direct jobs and $17 billion in California wages, loses an estimated $3.3 billion a year as a result of piracy here in California. According to California law, if a prosecutor can show that a defendant's money consists of ill-gotten gains delivered from specific criminal activity, then the money is subject to forfeiture. Currently, there are 33 different crimes that can trigger forfeiture of these ill-gotten gains. AB 160 will expand the list of offenses to include piracy, insurance fraud, and tax fraud. In order for forfeiture of criminally obtained assets to be allowed, the trigger crime must also be committed as part of an organized crime. But there are only 12 different offenses listed under organized crime that can fulfill this definition currently. The amendments that we have taken would add more white-collar offenses to the definition of organized crime to ensure that prosecutors are able to seize unlawfully obtained assets. AB 160 strengthens the law to better equip the state to combat California's growing underground economy and give the state back the revenue it deserves that will help benefit all of our communities. I respectfully ask for your I vote. I would also like to mention that this bill is supported by Board of Equalization Chair Jerome Horton. Thank you so much. Yes, and I'll mention that this uh, bill does have an I recommendation. Uh, you can have two witnesses speaking in support, two minutes each. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Sean Hoffman with the California District Attorneys Association, um, co-sponsor of, of AB 160. And as, as it exists today, the utility of our Little Rico statute, statute which is patterned after the federal statute, it's rather limited in its uh, restrictions and lack of procedures. So whereas the federal statute has 150 different crimes that can trigger forfeiture, in California we've got only 33, none of which address tax fraud despite the rampant tax fraud problem in the state. The underground economy that, as Mr. Dababne said, costs the state $9 billion in taxes every year. Um, <clears throat> further, under our statute as it exists today, it's not enough for a criminal enterprise to be simply engaged in one of those 33 crimes. That has to also be part of a pattern of criminal activity, meaning it must be committed as part of organized crime, uh, which has only 12 specific offenses that meet that definition. So 
law enforcement has to match up one of the 33 trigger offenses with one of the 12 organized crime offenses. Only at that point can a prosecutor file the criminal complaint, and then after that can the assets be seized, provided the uh, organization hasn't had a chance to already disperse those assets. So AB 160 makes this a much more useful statute for law enforcement and gives prosecutors a helpful tool in addressing organized crime in California. Thanks. Thank you very much. Other witnesses in support? Tim Yarian on behalf of John Lovell and the California College and University Police Chiefs in support of the bill. Morning, Mr. Chair, members. Ryan Sherman on behalf of Los Angeles County Professional Peace Officers, Santa Ana and Long Beach Peace Officers, uh, Sacramento Deputy Sheriffs, and California Fraternal Order of Police, all in support. Mr. Chairman, members, Dan Filizzato on behalf of the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office in support. Good morning, Chairman, members. Uh, David Hunter, Senior Legal Counsel to Chairman Jerome Horton, fully in support of this bill. Uh, just briefly as a statistic, fiscal year 2011, 2012 through 2012 through 2013, our organization uh, uh, investigated crimes dealing with excise tax on tobacco products. And pursuant to our investigations, we uncovered $58 million in tax fraud. From these criminal prosecutions, we were ordered uh, $33 million, but we only got $4 million back collected in restitution. And that's $54 million. Uh, that's gone. It's gone forever. The underground economy is serious, and this bill is just the way to fight it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your statement. I allowed him a little bit more time as uh, your witnesses had not used up their time. Um, so any more witnesses in support? Any witnesses in opposition? Chair members, Francisco Labac on behalf of the ACLU, I just want to thank the author for taking the amendments. We're no longer opposed. Thank you. Oh, very good. Um, if there are any other witnesses, then uh, comments and uh, questions from committee members. Uh, there being no comments or questions, uh, Mr. DeBobney, you may close. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Chair uh, for your help with making sure that we could resolve some of the issues uh, to make this bill have no opposition at this point. Just let me conclude by some of the offenses that will now be covered to allow our state law enforcement and district attorneys to make sure that we are not only holding these criminals to the highest level of the law, but also making sure we're bringing back resources for the state. Pimping, forgery, mayhem, Solicitation of crimes, grand theft, trafficking in controlled substances, presentation of fraudulent claim, money laundering, human trafficking will all now be covered under this statute to make sure that these organized crime syndicates can no longer hide behind loopholes in the law. This is a very straightforward bill that will stop counterfeiters from profiting from their crimes, hold them financially liable, and capture the tax revenues lost as a direct result of their criminal activities. I respectfully ask for your eye vote today. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dubovnik, and you're accepting then all the proposed amendments. And I want to say how much I appreciate your working with the ACLU, the ACLU's um, uh, hard work and the work of our staff, and I think this is an excellent bill, and I hope we get it signed into law. I thank you for that. Uh, with that said, it's an I recommendation, and what, uh, we need a motion. So moved. Second. So moved by Mr. Lackey, uh, seconded by Mr. Jones Sawyer, and then the motion is? Do pass as amendment to Reverend Tax Committee. Do pass as amendment to Tax Committee. Uh, Madam Secretary, you may call the roll. Quirk. Aye. Quirk, aye. Melendez. Melendez not voting. Gonzalez. Aye. Gonzalez, aye. Jones Sawyer. Aye. Jones Sawyer, aye. Lackey. Aye. Lackey, aye. Lowe. Aye. Low I Santiago, Santiago I. Then the motion is out six zero. Congratulations, Mr. Dubovny, and again, thank you for your hard work. All right, the next person is Mr. Levine, who is not here. Mr. Daly, ah, Mr. Daly, uh, and so this is AB eight sixty, item number nineteen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. This bill seeks to close a loophole within the current P-3 
penal code, and it is a loophole. Providers of professional services currently, such as chiropractors, masseuses, or physical therapists, who sexually assault their clients during the course of a treatment session are usually charged with felony sex crimes. However, under certain circumstances, California law only allows particular offenders to be charged with misdemeanor sexual battery. As a consequence, some individuals who have clearly crossed the line and committed sexual assaults can only be charged with less serious crimes. AB 860 adds provisions that will correct this flaw in the code. With me is Robert Mestman, a senior deputy district attorney in Orange County with the Orange County DA's office. Mr. Mestman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, thank you. Uh, in addition to being a senior Could DA. Could you move your microphone a little closer? Sure. Is that better? That's yes. much better. Uh, in addition to being a senior deputy DA in Orange County, I'm also a member of the CDAA Legislation Committee. Uh, I spent four years uh, as a sexual assault prosecutor, and I also teach statewide on sexual assault issues. Uh, as the Court of Appeals has stated in the case where a chiropractor sexually assaulted a patient, quote, there appears to be no limit to the ability of our species to devise new and different bad things to do to each other, unquote. That's from the FAM case from 2009. <clears throat> AB 860 addresses, in a loophole, addresses a loophole that allows sexual predators who perform professional services to escape appropriate punishment for assaulting vulnerable victims. These, these defendants are typically in positions of trust and power, such as doctors, chiropractors, massage therapists, while the victims are typically vulnerable individuals, usually alone in exam rooms, partially or fully undressed. Under current law, if such a predator commits a sexual assault using force or violence, then that's punishable as a felony. Also, if such a predator obtains, obtains consent from the person fraudulently, for example, by saying that the sex act is necessary as part of a treatment or an exam, then that's punishable as a felony. But if such a predator simply commits a sex act without the victim's consent while she's being examined or treated, then that is punishable only as a misdemeanor battery. There have been cases where victims have just been frozen in fear, unable to move or say anything. Other cases where the victim protests and says stop, and then the conduct stops without any force or violence. And under the current law, that cannot be prosecuted as a felony, as other similar crimes are. Clearly, such serious sexual violations, such as we're talking penetration, oral copulation, of a, such a vulnerable victim should be punished more severely than just a simple touching, which is what a battery is. There have been several cases where convictions for this conduct were reversed because of this loophole in the law, and even more cases currently being prosecuted where prosecutors are precluded from filing the appropriate charges because of the loophole. AB 860 fixes the law so the punishment fits the crime and is aligned with other similar offenses. Thank you very much. Thank you for your excellent testimony. Uh, second witness? Ah. He's my staffer. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is Kevin. <laughs> All right. Glad to have you here. Uh, other witnesses in support? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sean Hoffman with the California District Attorneys Association in support. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Gail Stewart on behalf of San Diego County District Attorney Bonnie Dumanis in support. Very good. Any other witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? I think we have someone coming up. Yes. Hi, uh, David Bouchot on behalf of Legal Services for Prisoners with Children in opposition to this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Do you wish to say uh, why you're opposed? You have uh, a couple of minutes if you want to take it. Uh, yeah. All right. Sure. Let me, let me just grab my, I have a fact sheet on it really quickly. All right. Yeah. We, we are definitely interested in hearing your concerns and you have a right to make a longer statement. <clears throat> Sorry, yeah, so, the, uh, the traffic. Thank you. You have two minutes. <clears throat> okay, yeah, 860. Um, we, have, we have two main concerns with this bill. Um, our first concern is that there's a very similar statute just above it. Section uh, 243.4C is extremely similar, uh, except that it um, is a wobbler sentence instead of a mandatory felony conviction. So 
our sort of general position is that uh, this is kind of an unnecessary um, addition to the statute and it removes judicial discretion and there's some potential challenge on the basis of equal protection because these are two very similar statutes and we don't know you know if the prosecutor chooses this one versus the other one uh, there's some potential challenges in the form of judicial discretion um, in, in the forms of equal protection sorry uh, we also we also don't think that this bill is a good idea from a broader policy perspective because you know our prisons and jails are overcrowded we don't think that you know taking away judicial discretion and making mandatory felony sentences for you know just about everything is really the solution to this sort of problem thank you okay uh, thank you very much I appreciate your uh, telling us your concerns uh, any other witnesses in opposition Okay, it's been moved by our vice chair and seconded uh, by member Gonzalez. Uh, Mr. Daly, you may close. I only recently became aware of this group's uh, concerns and I'll be happy to meet with them and, and, uh, and uh, have a good discussion. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Um, oh, go ahead. One more witness. No, not one more witness. All right. Um, so you have closed? Yes, sir. Thank All right. you, Mr. Chair. Um, I spent a lot of time on this because, as, uh, as said, prisons are, are full, and we ordinarily do not look for additional felonies. I think in this case we can make that exception. I do not have a problem with this at all, uh, being a felony. Furthermore, I, it, it, again, the opposition has said this is covered in other uh, sections of code. Uh, the witness from uh, the uh, Orange County DA here is a scholar in this area. He has brought me many cases which on common sense grounds, at least my common sense and I think the common sense of these members, are clearly uh, crimes yet they weren't, didn't go forward. So a combination of the evidence that this other section, at least at the moment, uh, is not being used and that I think this is deserving of a felony, which for me is very rare to have a new felony. But I think in this case we should make an exception. So it's an I recommendation. And uh, what is the uh, proper motion here? Do pass to appropriations. And it's do pass to appropriations. And thank you very much, Mr. Daly, for bringing this excellent bill forward and to the uh, DA's office for doing all of this work. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So, uh, Madam Secretary, you may close the room. Hmm. Cl call the roll. Quirk? Aye. Quirk? Aye. Melendez? Aye. Melendez? Aye. Gonzalez? Aye. Gonzalez? Aye. Joan Sawyer? Aye. Joan Sawyer? Aye. Lackey? Aye. Lackey? Aye. Lowe? Aye. Lowe? Aye. Santiago? Aye. Santiago? Aye. Uh, vote was? Seven out unanimously. Uh, out unanimously, seven zero. Congratulations, and I uh, hope that this can all go forward and be signed into law. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you to the committee members. Appreciate it. Thank you.